Welcome to livingpianos.com. I'm Robert Estrin, and this is a really important subject, the importance of double-checking your work when practicing the piano. It's the most amazing thing. If you've ever seen any of my videos on how I practice, I break things down to the smallest part, take a little phrase, I study the notes carefully, just in the right hand, a little section, I figure out the rhythm, and then I count, uh, make sure everything is secure, figure out the best fingering, then all the other details, you know, the expression, the slurs, the staccatos, and I look back and forth dozens of times until I've got it securely memorized and I'm sure that I've gotten it right. Then I do the same long process, just with this tiny phrase, the left hand part, until that is secured, going back and forth, double and triple checking. Finally putting them together, of course that's the hardest part, and naturally there's a lot of back and forth in that process. It's getting them together, making sure it's right. Go on phrase by phrase until got the whole piece memorized, and then you know what happens? I go back again and I start studying the score, take the foot off the pedal, go really slowly to double check the work, and yet with all of this, I still discover things I didn't catch in the score. It's the most incredible thing. And even pieces I played for, for years, if you really study the score carefully, you're always going to find things that somehow you missed. You go, oh my gosh, that slur ends there. I thought it ended, wow, the retard starts here. It might not be notes, although you never know. Sometimes it can be an accidental from earlier in the measure that you somehow, somehow missed. So I really recommend that, particularly in the formative parts of learning a piece, really go back and forth a great deal. Because, as I've said so many times before, unlearning is way harder than learning. So you must constantly reference that score at every stage of your practice, and even when you think you've got the piece all beautifully memorized on performance level, go back, put the music on the music rack, and go excruciatingly slowly. And I bet you find things that you didn't know were there. After all, there are tens of thousands of details in even a short piece of music when you consider notes, rhythm, fingering, phrasing, and expression times two hands. It's kind of mind-boggling that we can learn music. And that's why I recommend the method that I just described. So any of you have pieces you really have solid, go through your score, as I just mentioned, slowly, no pedal, really painstakingly slowly reading everything, and see what you discover in the process. I think it'd be richly rewarding. Better than that, be sure to double, triple, quadruple your work as you go, so you don't have to unlearn things later, and it will save you vast amounts of time in the long run for those little extra checks along the way. I hope this is helpful for you. Again, I'm Robert Estrin at livingpianos.com, your online piano resource. By the way, there's a lot more content on my Patreon channel. Any of you who like to join, check it out. Thanks again, and you're welcome to subscribe. And for all of you subscribers out there who have rung the bell, thank you. I have lots more coming your way. See you next time. I'm Robert Estrin.